aimed for those who were musicians already or have start, had, had started learning music already and uh, were looking forward to be active in the sense of an interactive course uh, dealing with bits and pieces of Persian music. So finally, we came to this uh, decision that we can start another course, which we termed as Persian, a uh, meet Persian music, sorry, we, we titled as meet Persian music. Uh, but it also depends on you, of course, because we decided to have this first session like a public space that you can join. Uh, I'm going to present uh, a, an overview, like an introduction to what might be hopefully happening in a whole 12 session round. And then you decide if you would like to stay with us for the next uh, three months or not. And please uh, let Rhythmitica know if you are going to register before the end of Monday. So uh, at the end of this Monday, we are going to decide if the whole 12 sessions will be running or not, depending on how many participants we might have. Uh, I hope you all fi find it interesting and, and uh, inform informative enough to, to stay with us for the whole thing. So let's get started. I'm going to invite us all to start with something on YouTube. I'm going to, to mute it and ask you, oh, well, you don't have to, by the way, I'm going to start uh, presenting. Uh, and if you have questions, opinions, comments, you can put them in the chat, or you can keep them for the end of the session, because we will have the last 10 minutes or around 10 minutes in the end of the session. Uh, for questions, discussions, comments, and so on. But for now, ask yourself if you know what's happening on stage here. Here we have a typical or rather typical ensemble of what we call Persian music. It was a live concert, a, a live uh, performance uh, of one of the most prominent musicians in the last 50 years in Persian music. His name is Hossein Ali Zadeh. He's sitting in the center. And the ensemble is Hamavayan Ensemble. Uh, this was a performance in Sweden about uh, nine years ago, if I'm not mistaken. And I have chosen the encore piece to watch and listen to, just as, as a nice start. But I would also like you to engage yourself with different aspects of this, like what instruments you see in this performance, if you can hear different lines, what is happening in the music, if you can connect with the melodies, or if you know Farsi, if you can connect with the poetry. And if not, just enjoy.
So, some of you might be familiar even with the piece. Some uh, might have seen some of these instruments before. Some might be even playing some percussion, I guess. Uh, what I would like to suggest from now on is that whenever we watch something together or we listen to something together, uh, put down some notes of what you find interesting or you have a question about. Like, I, I didn't really get what was happening in the rhythm here. Or what was that instrument sitting there or playing, uh, being played like this? So start to develop a habit of putting questions forward with any exposure you have to the material we have here. But this was only an example to start with. This was a composition by Hossein Ali Zadeh, is his name, one of the most prominent figures, as I said, in the contemporary Persian music. Uh, the ensemble changes from time to time. I mean, it's his ensemble and it's uh, called Hama Voyan. You can find a lot of stuff from him and from that ensemble online. Uh, but the uh, musicians who work with him change from time to time. We will watch another example of his work today, hopefully. I would like to share with you a couple of words which you might already know uh, or have been exposed to at least. Um, if this whiteboard works for us. So the question or the words we deal with is basically what is Persian? And then in comparison, what is Iranian? Are these two uh, words the same things or two different things? And then you, what you will see here and there a lot is that they pack or they la label things under the uh, under traditional if i manage to make this big enough yeah traditional iranian music traditional persian music and recently it's very uh, fashionable to call it classical as well and the question is always, okay, what are we talking about? Is it about the country? Are we basically referring to the music of the country of Iran or the people of Iran? Uh, I, I don't know if you have ever searched, for example, in YouTube, if you type in Persian music, very probably the first links you find are pop music with Persian words. If you look for Iranian music, again, it's quite likely that you end up with the same thing. But if you go for something more or less like Persian traditional music, then it's more probable that you find uh, Hossein Ali Zadeh, for example, as, as one of these uh, musicians we talk about. And as I said, more, uh, more recently, it's... Uh, more fashionable to call it classical. I personally have some opinions about why these titles are not the best things to use for the music we are dealing with. But like any other cultural endemic uh, developed material during time and in different places, different eras, different areas, and with different peoples of different generations, it has a lot of different aspects, so you can't really name it under one thing. But the most recent and actually a bit better uh, term, at least technically, is Dastgah music. They use the same title when they want to um, refer to the, to the same music, actually, but with uh, more precision. So whenever you see Persian Dastgah music, it's very likely that they are talking about the same thing as Persian traditional music or Persian classical music, but they are referring to it with the word Dastgah 
because you will see later that the main content or the core of the material in this music is what we call Dastka. So, back to the question of what we mean by Persian, I would like us to take a look at something else here. By the way, uh, the guy you see in the picture, you will probably see a lot more later. Siamak Jahangiri, one of very good musicians in, in my generation, uh, a nay player. We will see him more uh, in the future. So if, if we'll take a look at the map, which I'm sure you know very well, uh, well, obviously we are talking about somewhere here, right? This is Iran and most of those who are Persians <laughs> are supposed to be in this area. But what about the, uh, the bigger uh, region? Do we have anything in common with them? Are we taking the borders, the political borders, as the cultural borders here, as the musical borders as well? There is a lot of stuff on the internet if you study, if you want to go through Persian music history, as it were, that will take you a long way back in history. They would start from even before when Iran was this map. This is from Achaemenid times. This is about 400 BC, uh, 500 BC, sorry. Uh, and in those times, the Persian Empire or the Achaemenid Empire was uh, ruling such a big area. Keep it there. And let's take a quick look at the areas with the timeline. Um, I hope you can see, uh -huh, it should be better now. Uh, you will see on the political borders of different countries that exist on the map today, you will see the areas that you could find traces that we relate to the Iranian uh, heritage, I mean, cultural heritage now. And you can see how much it differs in different eras of time. This is the biggest in the Achaemenid times. It will grow bigger later. Uh, between the Sasani times, which is right before Islam here, and then afterwards, when the, I'll stop it for a moment, when Islam comes, and as you see, it's a very vast uh, area, it goes as far as, as Morocco and, and South Europe in Spain. I'm not sure if you could see this corner of the map. Uh, here, this area is, is quite far from what we have as Iran uh, nowadays. Uh, but, of course, this is not Iran. But if you study history, there are a lot of discussions uh, looking for, and to some extent even uh, somehow convincingly approve, that there are traces of what we had in this area before Islam expanding in the territory. Of course, that's debatable. But let's go further in time. If I manage to move this, yeah. Then after Islam, Iran merging with the, with the whole area. The, the main uh, court was in what we have as Iraq today, but Iran also became quite uh, prominent with its own figures. Then in Ilkhani times and Timuri times, there are some local courts which are very important. Then in Safavi times, again, we have, I will go back a bit. We will see it again with another map. In Safavi times when Iran is not that big anymore, but the idea of having a nation state is more or less taking shape, uh, especially in, in the, competitiveness in, in, in competing with the Ottomans that were ruling in a huge area. Uh, well, their base was Istanbul in Turkey today, but they were the biggest rivals of Safavids in Iran. And actually this time, this, this era was when we, we somehow disconnected from the uh, 
music we had before. Some, some very important things changed in that era. And then after that, in uh, 18th century, 19th century, Qajar came to power. And from that time on, Iran is more or less the same entity. Let's take a look at another presentation of the same thing, if I can manage to show you. Yes, uh, we don't want the disclaimer and then the yeah, there is an, a quotation from Cyrus the Great. But what we want to look at is how in that area we have we can actually see the spots that we now are connecting with in, in Shush or Zuza in Ilam. We have the oldest uh, um, all this evidence we can have from musical instruments. Then in Ekbatana, in Median Empire, then later in the Achaemenid times, we all have, I mean, these are the things we can trace some things back to. We know a bit about some instruments. We know a bit of this and that, sometimes a name of a musician, sometimes only a carving on a piece of uh, clay. Uh, well, when, when from the time of Alexander and, and uh, Seleucid, uh, sorry, Seleucid Empire, uh, we have very little, we know very little. Again, a bit later, after Partian take over, we are unclear about what music was like, but from Sasanid times that will come after this, we have uh, quite some evidence of what the musical scene was like and who were the prominent musicians, what was it like at the court, so on and so forth. I don't want to get into the details. I just want you to have a look at the areas which are uh, now not Iran anymore, but certainly could be taken as somehow connected. This is after Islam, obviously. Umayyad Caliphate comes to power with the center of Damascus, with the capital, and then Abbasid in, in Baghdad. Uh, they are very influential in the times of Abbasid. There are prominent musicians that come from this area in Iran, around Rey or Tehran today, who go to court and make a lot of uh, influence in, in the musical tradition there. Some names are there in the history, some we even have in the musical intervals from that time. Uh, I don't want to jump forward. If you like to, to watch it later with the details, you know where to find it. You have the title here. It develops, I mean, with the history of uh, what happens in this region of the world, it de develops in a way that we have the change of capital all the time. And as you can imagine, Many of uh, scholars, artists, writers, and, and whoever you can imagine in the world of culture goes to the more powerful court where the, the power is, where money is, where uh, there are patrons uh, supporting arts. So we know it from history again that during all these times, uh, we have, especially in Timurid Empire, we have prominent musicians traveling from uh, this end to that end and back to this end. The most important example is Abdul Qadir Maraghi in, in the Timurid era, before Safavid times, who was first in Baghdad and then went to Harat, which is now in Afghanistan, and then ba uh, went to uh, Tabriz. And he was originally from Maragh, which is again in this area. That's only one example. We know many others who act, uh, exactly lived the same and took with them the musical knowledge and the tradition. But from this time on, I'm a bit behind. I wanted to talk about Qajar Empire. From the time of Qajar, we come to a very important change in the history of music, especially because we have photography and there are devices to record sound. So what we have from music as sound 
And what we see in real photos from musical instruments, they all come from Qajar time onwards. And as you can see, it's not that old. And after Qajar comes Pahlavi times, there were two kings. And then after that, we have the Islamic Republic, which was another big change in the history of music of my country, because there was a lot of uh, pressure on music and musicians. But that's another story altogether. So in, in such a vast area, what can we take as Persian music? I want to add something else on top of that. And that is that if you take another look at the map, there are a whole variety of ethnic groups. In the middle, we have roughly what we call Persians, but all around the country are different uh, ethnic groups with their own languages. Again, I don't want to go through the details, but if you want, you can look up the ethno-linguistic groups in Iran. And as you can see, all different colors are showing the, the huge diversity of what we have here. We have Azeris, then we have Kurds, we have Lors, here we have Gilaks, we have Talesh, we have Mazandaranis, we have Baluchs here, it's Khorasan here, and plus migrations that were some, uh, some were forced, some were encouraged, some were out of uh, changes in climate and so on and so forth. And as you can see, this whole thing is again a mix. And if you want to oversimplify, the black area, which is the Persian speaking area, it's about the language now, is this much, but the rest are all covered uh, with other ethnic groups, all, all inhabited uh, by Kurds, Turks, uh, Arabs, Lors, uh, Baluch, Gilaks, and, and so on and so forth. So I come back to the first question again. What are we talking about when we are considering Persian music, Iranian music, and all the things around it? Well, the musicians claim that they have inherited something which is documented, recorded, and blah, 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 in Rajar times. That's about 200 something years ago. But that was developed all through these regions in the whole history of that region. So if you go to a musician who plays this instrument, for example, which is an oud, they would probably tell you that this has a very, very long history. It's not only 200 years old. And the music I'm performing, which is Persian music, called Persian music, uh, is also as old. I don't want to discuss if it's true or not, how much of it is true, how much of it is false. But I want to put forward the idea that what we know is that we have a kind of mix in that culture. There are traces you can find between um, a melody in the south of Iran with something similar to that in the northeast of Iran, and something with a bit of a change comes in the Azeri areas, which is in the uh, northwest and so on. But the main Persian music goes with Persian language. And this is the key point. We can also prove that a lot of characteristics in this music are somehow closely connected with the, uh, with the sound of Persian language. So I think in order to be rather safe, we can use the word Persian still, not Iranian, and somehow connect the language with the music, but of course, there's a lot more in it. So from Qajar times uh, till now, we have experienced a lot of different things in the music. Let's take a look at this performance uh, this is an old TV broadcast, uh, and uh, it goes around a very famous form of poetry. Uh, it's called Sagi Name. Sagi is 
in the po Persian poetry, in the Persian literature, Sagi is the person who serves wine. And that's a very key, important figure. Of course, figuratively, it's also used for the beloved and um, whoever serves the uh, mystical love with the others. But that's another story. Sanginame in Persian poetry has a special kind of rhythm as well, following the pattern of Biya Sagiyan Meike Halavarad, Baram Bram, Baram Bram, Baram Bram, Baram. There are other ones as well, but this is the most prominent. And based on that, there are also rather free rhythm performances of that type of poetry performed by a singer, followed by an instrumentalist. Let's listen to a couple of minutes of this, not the whole performance, and try to follow the instrument and the singer. The singer is Mohammad Reza Shajarian. He's, of course, another icon in Persian Dastgah music. The oud player, uh, who was also my master and oud teacher, is Mansur Nariman. Both of them have left this world. Just a quick note, uh, this is what we call free rhythm, we will deal with it later too, or avazi. Avaz in Persian music, avaz generally in Persian language means singing. And in Persian music is a free rhythm form, which is originally coming from the singer, but also can be played on an instrument or followed by an instrument. So this was one example of, let me add to our previous terminology we had on the board. This is an example of avazi. Or free rhythm. which you see a lot in Persian music, you deal a lot with it. And actually the, uh, the more professional a musician is supposed to have become, uh, the better at doing avazi or free rhythm they should be. Some of the ma masters, the, the, the best ones, pre perform only avazi. It's, it's like uh, talking, it's like reciting prose. There is no pulse, there is no beat to count. Uh, and this, in a traditional uh, program of performance, takes most of the time. 
of, of the whole performance. So if you have a program of, let's say, 50 minutes, you might come to the point to realize if it's really traditionally done, you come to a point that you realize, oh, more than half of it, like more than uh, 25 minutes of it is in free rhythm. In extreme cases, there's only one piece in the beginning and one piece in the end, which you can tap with, which there are beats in. But the main content, the most part of it is avazi or free rhythm. Let's take a look at another old uh, TV broadcast. This is from uh, an old art festival in, in Shiraz. Uh, it, it used to happen uh, be, before Islamic Republic came to power. You, you can see the title here, Shiraz Arts Festival. And um, the musicians here, it, it's, a, it's a very small ensemble which is also a very traditional one, of, of four instruments only. Here we have a santur player, you will see a bit up close later. We have a tar player here, uh, we have a kamonche player, and the tombak player will be sitting here, you'll see. There is no singer, and this is a different part in this performance. Uh, there are uh, metric pieces, meaning with beats, and there are avazi parts, which are played by the soloists. Uh, on, on their instruments. And a 27-minute program is done without any singing. So it's all instrumental. The Santur player, Farah Mars Paivar, you see the name up here, I hope you can see it, uh, is, is also the composer of the pieces and he's the uh, master of Santur. Almost all the Santur players after him are influenced by him. He was um, writing methods, a lot of books are done by him, a lot of compositions. The tar player, Jalil Shahnaz, is also an icon in Persian music, especially in improvisation on his own instrument. The same with the Kamanche player, Asghar Bahari. We will come to all these names later in the uh, next sessions, hopefully, when we discuss every instrument one by one. And the tombak player, which you will see a bit later, is the father of modern tombak in Iran. Uh, tombak was totally revolutionized after he performed on it. Let's listen to a bit of the beginning, and then I will jump uh, to a bit later, just to give you an overview. I would like to add that this was uh, th these concerts were done in Shiraz in a very nice place. Uh, the, it's a tomb of Hafez. We call it Hafezie, meaning where people believe that Hafez, the most prominent uh, Ghazal writer, sonnet like um, in, in Persian poetry, and he was also a um, an icon in mysticism, sort of. Uh, a lot of people go there just to pay their respects. And part of these arts festival was performed, I mean, the music performances uh, were done there. So it has its own uh, special vibe as well. the beginning of a metric piece, which we call Pish Daromad. We can come to uh, what a Pish Daromad is uh, later in our course. Now let's listen to a bit of a solo.
as you can see, these are free rhythm melodies. I can jump a bit forward and come to the part where the Camon Chep player is doing free rhythm, in, well, loosely they call it improvisations. <laughs> And now the Santu place, uh, player will take over and then he will play his solo and then in the end, a bit later I guess, they all play another metric piece together. Avazi parts we talked about, but the other parts which are not Avazi, and you can feel the beats in them, are generally called Zarbi. Some of you might already know that Zarb is another name for the percussion you saw in this uh, video already. Uh, it's called Tombak as well. If you can play Tombak or Zarb with something, that kind of piece is called Zarbi. Tombak is the name of the instrument, which can also be called Zarb. Let me change the color of that. Yeah. So Tombak and Zarb are the same things, but Zarbi is the opposite of Avazi. So in a typical Persian music program, you have different sections of Zarbi and Avazi. If there are singers or not is another question. The singer can be singing in a Zarbi, which has its own title, we will discuss later, or being in free rhythm. The instrumentalists as well can do Zarbi or Avazi. Well, there are some uh, new contemporary stuff where Tom Beck is also doing things which are not Zarbi. They do effects and, and uh, phrasings of their own, but that's very rare. The typical function a tombak has in a performance is, of course, doing the beats and keeping the rhythm, which is more of a zarbi nature, not an obos. So the first step in exposing yourself to a program of Persian music would be to follow what is happening in this program. Which parts are zarbis? Which parts are obozis? And then if there is a singer, there is usually a kind of dialogue between the singer and the instrumentalist, and the melodies follow one another. It can be taken more or less like a play, a piece of drama on stage, where you have dialogues between characters, and there is also a journey or a story happening. But of course, in order to be uh, able to follow the journey, you need to have some clues of how they are planning for their uh, story to go forward. Uh, and those need some clues that we will need to discuss later. But for now, let's take 
a look at another performance. Here I would jump very quickly. Uh, later we can come back to all these performances one by one. This is another program by a bigger ensemble under the uh, patenting of, of Faromar's Paiva as a Santu player. This is all, another uh, TV broadcast uh, from before uh, Islamic Republic. Uh, uh, this is the bigger ensemble and you can see different instruments here. I will just play a little bit. And by the way, they are playing Azarbi for the beginning of the program. Later it will go, it will go to Abazis, but I won't play that part now. On this side of the ensemble, you see Santur, you see Tar, Oud, and Robab. We can come back to them in next sessions, what instruments they are and what are the qualities they produce. You will see the other side of the ensemble soon. These are the bowed instruments. This is a kamonche and this is a reichak. I will jump a bit forward. First, I give you this look. Here we have another Reichak, and the tomback player is sitting here. And then in the overall look of yeah, here, you see the singer and the nay player also sitting. This was only done for the sake of the TV broadcast, not that it's a common way of sitting for the um, ensemble. This is another performance of the same ensemble with the same singer, uh, but it's um, done in the arts festival in Shiraz in another year, of course, and again in Hafezir. Just take a look at the ensemble. <laughs> As you see, the instruments are more or less the same. The Santur is sitting here. There is a tar, oud, robab, tombak. The bowed instruments are sitting in the background. The nay player, and here's the singer, right? That's, that's a rather common form for a Persian Perform, a, a Persian music ensemble in performance. This was a bigger ensemble. Unfortunately, the quality of the picture is not good. We will come to this music uh, in the future because it's one of the key um, points in the history of Persian music in the last 50, 60 years. Uh, the head of the ensemble is a tar player. His name is Mohammad Reza Lotfi. The main singer is Mohammad Reza Shajarian, the other icon I name, named. But the other people are good musicians only playing in the ensemble, not taking part in solos. Before I play a bit of that for you, I would like to add something to our whiteboard, and that is that the role of a soloist is taken very seriously. And uh, that is kind of uh, the sign if you are the musician. Uh, the, the, the funny side of it is that usually, they, I mean, there isn't, there isn't an orchestra normally in a Persian music performance. You have an ensemble maximum. Um, and 
making an orchestra came to fashion for a while, but it's not traditionally in the uh, musical culture. But being the soloist means being the person who does the avazi parts and who is responsible to play in dialogue with the singer. So you, if I want to bring in the analogy with a film or a drama, it's like being the main or the leading and supporting roles, like the, an actor or actress in the main role, in the leading role, and then there is an actor or actress in the supporting role. And that is really uh, important in uh, the tradition. So here we, we just listen to a little bit of the beginning of the line, but I, I will keep it for another session to go through the music. <laughs> The rest of the ensemble is not shown here, but I will skip it. The same figure, Mohammad Reza Lotfi here, is doing a solo performance, a whole concert, more or less, on sitar as one of his main instruments. Uh, let's just listen to a couple of seconds of that. It's almost a whole concert like that, at least this part. Another soloist, which is very famous nowadays, especially Keihan Kalhor is his name on Kamanche. We will just take a look at a couple of phrases from his play. <laughs> You see, all these are avazi, all free rhythm. There are some compositions which are done more recently uh, in, in different forms. I don't want to play them all for you. Unfortunately, we won't have time. But some of them try to take um, a bit of a westernized approach, but with the material which is still coming from this Persian Dasko music. This is a cute example of that. It's performed by the students at the university, but the original composition was uh, for Santur and an and a ensemble, string ensemble. Uh, and, and the composition was uh, by a composer, Hossein Dehlavi, you will see him later, and Faramars Paivar, the Santur player. Again, just the beginning to give you an idea.
And one more extreme than this one was a bigger orchestra that was done by Hossein Dehlavi. And that is all with Persian musical instruments. Uh, a lot of santours, a lot of tars, a lot of ouds, and, and you'll see in the picture. The conductor is Hossein Dehlavi, the composer I was talking about. I will go a bit forward. As you can see, this was obviously after the Islamic Revolution, where wearing this uh, hijab on women's head was uh, a mandate, kind of. So, uh, with what I just went through, I wanted you to have an overview of different formats that the Persian music can be introduced with. I mean, you can have an orchestra. This was the extreme case of all these uh, instruments sitting together, many santurs, many tars, many ouds, and so on. Or a, a solo solo, like the Lotfi on setar, and the small ensembles, uh, or a rather medium ensemble. All of them are performing a material which we call dastgah music. And it's in very close uh, relation with Persian poetry, more or less, we, both with the mindset and the rhythm and the way they match one another. So the whole world is supposed to take you into some experience from the beginning to the end. And uh, actually, according to that, what I did just now is not really good because I should have let you sit and listen from the beginning to the end of the whole program to, to allow you into this world. But today we were only tourists, as it were. We were just taking a, a small look at this and that uh, in order to, to have you uh, invited, more or less, to, to this passion of mine, which is Persian music. Uh, if we stay together and continue from next week on, the plan is to go into each and every one of these ideas like talk more about different kinds of zarbis listen to some of them uh, look at different examples of how an instrument tar santur oud kamanche setar and the others are performed we would listen to some examples and i think the most important thing is that you will get uh, the exposure to the musicians and their works which are taken as the highlights of this music. Uh, that's why I called this course a guide into Persian music. I, I hope that if we do this uh, at the end of the three months, you kind of feel familiar with what you can expect uh, in a typical Persian music program, if you already aren't actually. But I also hope that we can get more into uh, some details, like what different Daskars are doing, or uh, how can one say or follow 
uh, if this is this task or that one, if it is Mahur or Homayun or whatever. But that is not the very important thing unless you're a musician. Although I know some examples who only through listening and without playing anything can pick that up by their ear and, and uh, distinguish Daskars from one another. So it's only a matter of exposure and listening. But for now, that is not our goal. Our goal is to know what is what, who is who, and how to follow a Persian music program uh, in, in a sense that you are familiar with. So we can have a bit of time for questions and answers uh, or comments, if you like. You can uh, unmute.